All right, let's get started here. Um, first of all, thank you to the speakers that have come in. Today, we are talking about how and when do we return to workplace. So we have an awesome panel today. So let's get some introductions out of the way. So if you don't mind, we'll start with uh, the order of introductions. Uh, George, let's start with you. Sure. Hi. Good morning. Um, thanks for having me uh, along for this uh, this journey here. Uh, I'm I'm with TikTok. I, I manage uh, corporate real estate for the company for North America and Latin America. Um, we've got about 17 different offices um, that that I'm leading here in uh, in this region. Um, I've been with TikTok for uh, over two years now. Uh, prior to that, in Australia, um, in my experiences in private equity, uh, financial services. Uh, and technology. Awesome, thanks. And uh, Dave? Hi, yeah, thanks for having me, appreciate it. Um, my name is Dave Denny, and I am the, uh, the founder and CEO of Inside Source. Inside Source is a global office furniture company. We've uh, been in business about 30 years, and um, we, uh, we are in Bay Area, in Seattle, New York, and in London. And uh, we work with all kinds of companies all over the world and um, a lot of the tech, large technology companies here in the Bay Area and help them to figure out what they're, what they're doing with their spaces and how they, how they, uh, how they work within the, the world of today, especially, so. Thanks, Dave, welcome, and Carol. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm Carol Sandman, I'm founder and principal at API Design. We're located in Mountain View. And we've been in business for 27 years. And um, like Inside Source, we do work locally, of course, um, but also domestically and globally. And high tech firms have been our, um, you know, the bulk of our work has been with high tech. So. Awesome. And, um, and thank you. So let's get a few housekeeping things out of the way uh, as we get started. And we are looking forward to the discussion. The discussion is again is returning to workplaces. So a few things, um, uh, all the attendees, if you could add a little um, description about who you are, what your company, what your interests are, that'd be very helpful. As we go through the questions, maybe we can address some things based on your profile. Um, the, the, this webinar is being recorded. The replay will be available uh, soon after, within the 48 hours, as we process and clean up the pauses and awkward things and uh, the late start, whatever. And then uh, we'll also be providing you the handouts. So like uh, the speakers and uh, about who we are and any materials that we present. And then um, don't forget to ask your questions using the Q&A button. Uh, if you have anything else, or if you wanna keep, uh, stay tuned to the other events that we are gonna be uh, providing in the future, uh, or can always check us out at safesidechicken.com. Uh, by the way of introduction, uh, my name is Seva Darvimula. I'm the host today and I'm excited to have this panel. And I've uh, been about 20 uh, something years in the software industry. I'm most, I head up marketing here at Safe Search Check-In. And just a bit about us, we are a pay, digital screening provider. Uh, we, we basically do that with, have, without having any software to install, no shared devices, obviously uh, avoiding paper, and at 79 months per location uh, with no limits. And uh, one of the things I would do want to emphasize is our software, we're making it available for schools and nonprofits. So if any of the audiences know of any schools or um, nonprofits that can benefit from uh, having some screening, um, let us know and we're happy to do that. So we have been growing, we launched the company in July of last year. Since then, we've been seeing very rapid growth. And as you can see, uh, we have customers both in the US and Canada and uh, we are growing roughly about 30 for 40% per month in terms of both the usage and also a number of customers. So, and today, obviously you've met our panel today. And um, as we go through this panel, um, so some of the things that I wanna talk about is, you know, again, reminder, please ask your questions um, using the Q&A uh, chat button. So let's go to um, Carol first. So. Carol, what do you think is going on in the industry? As are people thinking about coming back to work? Uh, if so, how are they thinking about that? What do you know? What's going on? Start with your own office, but your um, perspective as well. Oh, our own office. Okay, well, so we actually kind of did a very soft, small opening in August um, because we have a few people with childcare issues and that kind of thing, and they really needed to be back in the office to be able to do their job. 
So um, we do have a front desk person who is there Monday through Thursday, um, eight to three reduced hours so that we can get our mail and packages and things. And we have probably five or six people that are coming in um, on a daily basis. I go in one day a week, so it really is kind of sporadic. But everyone who has come in, like if someone's come in to pick up samples or get mail or whatever, they're so excited to see other people that they haven't seen for um, you know all this time. So um, it really is a huge change in energy when there are you know 10 people in the office and it's an office of 60 people. Um, it makes a huge change um, having those people there. But for our clients, um, we do a lot of high tech work, as I mentioned, and I think a lot of companies are looking at um, the larger high tech companies who are already putting practices into place in terms of what they are going to do or have made announcements that they're not going to move back into their offices until you know, September or July or whatever. And um, I think it's the medium and smaller size companies that are kind of really waiting to see what's going to happen and looking to other firms to see how they're going to handle it. Um, but a lot of our, the work that we're doing right now, we have some, um, one client who's going completely free address um, and we're doing a very large project for them, um, over hundred thousand square feet and it's all free address and down to people who are looking at um, reorienting the, um, the benching so that people aren't sitting so close to each other. And it's really kind of a mixed bag. And then other clients who are just waiting to see what happens because they may find that with the vaccine, and as we return to normal at some point in time, that they don't need to make adjustments to their seating in their offices at all. So it really is a mixed bag right now. Dave? Yeah, you know, it's kind of similar for us. I, I've actually been working mostly, I work out of the office most days. And, and we've, 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 we have a, we, we actually instituted an Envoy system so that we have a, a check-in system. And, and signage around the office. We have probably in our San Carlos office, which is our headquarters, we probably have you know anywhere between four and ten people on any given day, kind of working in the office. And you know certainly it's been it's I think that it's just, like Carol, we we found that you know people are the the energy is really great when you get a few people in the office again. So people are really enjoying that. They're enjoying the the connection um, of of being together. And you know what we're seeing the same same thing. I, I I do think that the the larger companies, especially the large tech companies, they they haven't kind of figured out if you you know most most of them are saying you know we're going to come back six months after the um, after the you know the the vaccines get started. So you know somewhere around that July time frame is what a lot of these companies are saying. And then of course there are some who are just saying hey, we're gonna we're just going to wait till the end of the year. And then you know you've heard you've heard recent announcements where Salesforce is saying you know we're going to do a We've got this figured out. We're going to go third in the office. A third is completely remote, and a third is kind of a more of a hybrid model. But um, but what we are finding now is that we are getting a lot of uh, a lot of our clients are starting to ask the questions. Uh, you know, you know, how can we come back? And we're doing a big pilot program from one of our major tech companies about you know looking at different ways. We've we've, we've done some we've done some partnerships with a couple of our manufacturers around some you know micro office kind of solutions and different different types of screening solutions. And so that we're looking at, you know, those, those folks are looking at, you know, we're, we're actually looking at, you know, how, how can we do some experimentation with different, different ideas and different concepts so that they can go back to the office and feel, feel good about going back. Um, I, you know, I, I do think that, you know, that the, the, the post pandemic workplace, it's, it's going to change, it's going to be different. And um, I think, especially for technology companies, um, but, but I think it's going to be different. And I think they're going to, you're going to, you, you, you know, I think you're going to see a more hybrid work model. I think you're going to see, um, you're going to see the, the the change in even our our showroom space. You know, we're looking at coming back, and when we were thinking, uh, you know, two three months ago, we were thinking about okay, let's just you know let's redo the showroom with some new products and 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 put some new things. And now we're starting to think about how do we actually engage our own workforce to want to come back, not only you know want to come back to the office, but you know create the experience that's going to make them feel like you know they're productive and they're efficient. And if you know if they're going to come back two three four days a week. Uh, you know, what's, what's going to engage them? How are they going to collaborate more effectively and not necessarily, you know, have rows of workstations where they're just going to, where they're just going to work, you know, sit down every day. So I think that, 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 that paradigm is changing for, for us. And I, and I know for our clients as well. Awesome. George, you're in a different role than Carol and Dave. Uh, you are more basically a consumer of what they would provide. So how are you approaching this and what has changed for you in the last 12 months? 
Yeah, well, um, we've been at a work from home situation since um, last March, so we're coming up on a year now. Um, it, it's been a very interesting journey as we uh, extend our, our work from home deadlines. Um, one of one of our top priorities when when making a decision or when assessing whether we're going to return to the office is truly if it's safe for for employees to come back and um, and if they feel comfortable. Um, we're, we're looking at our peer companies as well. Um, we're making sure that uh, we, we stay in line with them um, because uh, you know, we, we have a lot of uh, resources invested in this right now. And we're making sure that, uh, that we just take our time, understand, make sure that the employees are safe. Uh, and that's our major concern right now. Okay, uh, let's start with you, George. Let's keep with you um, now. There are a lot of new executive orders coming out. You know, how do you, you know, be it from OSHA, be it from CDC, um, and also as you are determining. And obviously, TikTok um, was on a heavy growth mode until. The, I mean, it's even now. I think it's growing rapidly. So, what does that? How do you go about figuring out? How do you need to plan? How do you support? Whether we need this much capacity, we need here. We're, how are you collecting the data and how are you organizing this around? Well, this is what we think we need from an office planning standpoint, capacity planning standpoint, or whatever that may be. How are you, what's your approach to that? Yeah, so we're, we're in kind of a different situation because we're, we're kind of in hyper growth. Um, so our, our planning is a little different uh, in terms of what other more established companies may do. Um, we, we will go into a market we will set up, uh, typically this is what we've done. We've set up in a, in a WeWork or some other co-working location where there's that flexibility that we've got. Um, and then at, at a certain point, once we hit a certain threshold for headcount, that's when we move into a, a more of a fixed space. Um, trying to think of the, you know, the, the changes that we're looking at now because of um, the spacing that's required, uh, the social distancing uh, potential for uh, changing uh, habitual traffic patterns within the location, um, we're probably going to look at taking additional space um, or uh, a, a, in this hybrid approach, most likely limiting the number of people that would be coming into an office at any given point. Okay. And Dave? Um, so, so um, in terms of, in terms of, in terms of how we're deciding to come back to the office, um, you know, I think, is that what you're asking? Yeah, or how do you figure out, okay, this data supports this? Where are you collecting the data? How are you figuring yep. things out? What, 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 are you, what are you basing your decisions on? Yeah, so I, you know, one of the things we're doing is we've done a lot of internal surveys and, and we're really, you know, checking into the, you know, our, our own employees feeling about, the, you know, the safety of, of, of coming back to the office and making sure that, that you know, so we're, we're doing a lot of surveys. We're also, we've done a lot of surveys with our clients and really understand how, you know, how they're coming back to the office and, and really understanding the data around that. You know, we're looking at the CDC guidelines and, and you know, I think that we, it, it's interesting because there's a, a, a co-working space up in, in Healdsburg that, you know, I, we go up there occasionally and, and, you know, they've really dialed this thing in. They've got a, they've got maybe 10 people in the office at any given time. And, you know, they, we, they, they spaced out everything and they, you know, people sit at their desks and then if they get up from the desk, they put their mask on and they, I, and I, you know, I ventured in there once or twice just to, to see, to see what it's like. And I think that, you know, they've had, they've had a lot of success doing that. And I think, but I, but I think in general, we're kind of waiting as well to see, you know, just how the vaccines roll out and, and see how that, how that comes together. And I think at the end of the day, you've got to look at, you know, as George said earlier, you got to look at the safety of, of your employees and make sure that they feel comfortable coming back to the office as well. So, you know, a lot of it is just, is, is just understanding, you know, what our clients are doing and seeing how that works. And obviously, you know, we're going to be, you know, we're going to be an example setting for, for other companies, right? That's, you know, we're in the business of, of helping these companies figure out how they're going to go back to the office. So we're really just trying to understand, you know, the, the, the comprehensive data of, of, you know, how it's, you know, what, 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 what is it, when is it safe to come back and, and how then once you come back, how do you start to really socially distance and, and, you know, have the cleaning protocols and other things that you need so that people feel safe when they do come back. Thanks. Carol, um, I want to answer the same question, but I'll add a little caveat to that one big from your perspective. Are you being asked 
to redesign some of existing offices for some of these changes, be it social distancing, maybe maybe create more flex working spaces. Is that something that you're hearing in more in conversations with your clients? So um, I think that a lot of the um, of our clients are still kind of waiting to see. So we have projects that are new projects, and so those are being designed how they want to design them. But people who have just vacated their building and the building has been sitting there since last March haven't really taken um, the steps to like go in and do a full redo because I think they're waiting. Because I think that if the vaccine um, proves as successful as we all hope it's going to be, um, people could probably go back to normal by the end of the year and not have to change their, I mean, there will be some changes in the workplace and obviously it'll be hybrid as Dave said, you know, people are gonna be working partially in the work in the workplace and partially at home or wherever. But um, yeah, we haven't seen a big rush of let's quickly redo all of our um, our layouts to get all the desks six feet apart. People aren't doing that right now. And we had a client round table probably about two months ago and had seven of our clients on the round table and had them discuss a variety of topics. And I think one thing that you'd mentioned is the data because I think everyone is gonna be looking for data in terms of how they're gonna be planning their future workplace you know, how many people are coming in, how long are they staying, where, what rooms are they using, are they at their desk, are they in the conference room, et cetera. And so I think that collecting that kind of data is going to be critical for how we move forward with workplace um, planning scenarios. And then the last thing that I think is going to be super important, as um, was mentioned, people need to feel safe and comfortable coming back to the workplace. But when they come back, there has to be choice and flexibility in terms of where where they want to do um, the particular job that they're doing at that point in time. So it's going to be very employee focused um, going forward. Okay. So Dave, this may be more question for you. So one of the things that, you know, that was surprising in this whole um, pandemic um, activity is the manufacturing plants, regardless of the industry are running at full capacity, pretty much. So um, that, you know, including things like office furniture, Right, so people like Steelcase or Herman Miller, they're reporting, you know, we are at capacity. So the, it looks like the demand hasn't slowed down. So where is the demand going? Are people are like stocking up because they're afraid that they may not get what they need? Once a, is there a pent up demand that's anticipated? What do you think is happening, especially in the office furnishing, um, you know, leasing equipment space? Uh, did you say leasing? Was yeah. that? Yeah, so interesting. It, and so, so early on, you know, if you look at Allsteel, who's who's our major manufacturer, you know, they've been they've been going pretty much since the beginning. They they had a, 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 a very short shutdown of their of their facilities, and that's that's true with a lot of the manufacturers in Michigan as well. Herman Miller, CO Case, Hayworth, those guys. They all they, for the most part they were they were shut down for about a month or so. But they, you know, part of it is they're considered essential businesses, right? And they 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 work that out. And I also think too that you know the the, the Midwestern states. If you if you go to Iowa, uh, it's where where all steel is located. Iowa is completely different than than um, than what's going on in, in California, right? There, there's different protocols and and different ideas about you know what what's safe. That said, they they it, they instituted these these safety protocols early on, and so they've you know they've figured out how to manage. And, and all of them have had cases here and there of, of you know, but but small ones, and they've they've managed them very closely by. By you know by doing contract trace, contact tracing and things like that, um, but they but the but the truth is their business has you know even though they're at full capacity, they've all had they've all had anywhere between twenty and you know 35 percent you know downturn in their production in their market this year. So it's it's been you know obviously you know the the, the and NorCal I think is probably Northern California has probably been hit harder than a lot of the other areas. We I have a friend who has a dealership in in Arizona and they're having their best year ever. They're double where they were last year. So, so, you know, areas like Phoenix and another Atlanta even is there, those, those, those cities are doing better than we are here in Northern California. I think a lot of that is because these technology companies, you know, they can work more easily from home and they're able to, they're able to adapt uh, more, you know, at, in a more of a work from home environment. So I do think moving, moving forward, you talk about leasing. I do think that what's going to happen is you're going to see You're going to see where there's, there's shorter leases. You're going to see a more distributed kind of a workforce. We're seeing that already with our clients where they're saying, okay, we don't have to have a, you know, huge headquarters where everyone needs to come to. We're going to have more of a distributed workforce in different areas. We're going to be in, you know, we're going to be in, you know, some of these outlying cities and, you know, even in the Bay area outlying cities, but even like 
North Carolina or, or, you know, Austin, Texas or different places where they can. So I think what you're going to see is, and I think you're going to see some shorter term leases so that, you know, they may not sign a seven or 10 year lease. They might sign a two year lease. And so we're, we're talking a lot about, you know, how we can address that with, you talked about leasing. We're even talking about more of a, a subscription model with furniture. Can we go in and say, you know, listen, your furniture, you're going to keep it for two years and then you're going to, we're going to take it back from you. And, and so you're paying more of a subscription model than you are. And it sounds like rental, but it, but it's, but it's actually a, a, a different model where we can, or we can even say, okay, you're going to move to a different space. You can just continue that subscription model to your new space. So I think, I think some of that is going to change. And I think the adaptability factor is going to be huge for these clients. They need to be adaptable. They need to be able to be, you know, uh, they need to be able, able to adapt to new changes in their, in their world, in the, in the, in their office space. Awesome. So George, what, you are the one that is signing leases and deciding where to open offices and things like that. So, um, Two questions for you. One is, you know, tech, especially in the engineering side of things, has always been a let's co-locate people. That's where we get the most collaboration. Um, you know, we need to make sure the all the engineers on different teams are working together, right? So, how is that happening? And secondly, what has changed in the last twelve months about your approach to leasing or acquiring space, expanding or downsizing? Yeah, uh, interesting questions. Um, so <clears throat> we we do have a very uh, a young uh, not not just within our engineering space, but uh, but we do have a, a, a large amount of uh, young workforce um, out of university and stuff. And, and and I think with with that demographic, we it's much better to be in a in a group setting um, or to be in a in a in a setting where you're with your peers actively. Um, having that, that learning experience from each other, I think that's really important. Um, however, obviously that's turned upside down. Um, I, I, I do recall that um, having some discussions with uh, early on with uh, a couple of colleagues who were really excited to get back to the office. And, and I'm thinking, well, the office that we're gonna come back to isn't necessarily what you've experienced. Um, so I think that that's one of the big challenges that, that we're facing with having um, that, or, or thinking about or idealizing a return to work. Um, I think that uh, we've started developing, we've started becoming more and more uh, evolved in our work from home uh, in, the, uh, in our communication styles, um, developing tools. Um, so, so for example, uh, with my team, we meet on a regular basis just to discuss just about anything. Um, and it's really important for us. Um, I think that... Uh, in terms of leasing, um, I think that we've started delaying some of the leases simply because we just don't want to get into a, a commitment right now. Um, and that's especially true in markets where, where we're looking at five, seven, 10 year leases. Um, we just don't want to, we just don't want to commit to that right now. Okay. And uh, has that changed in terms of the amount of space that you're going to lease? Not yet. Not yet. Because we're still... We, we haven't been able to figure out if we are going to, um, if, for example, Carol mentioned the vaccine um, in, in kind of like a normalcy when returning to the office, um, are we going to have the normalcy when we return? Um, we, we just don't know. Um, and so we, we are ideally going into a situation where that would happen. Um, however, we, we just don't know at the moment. So, Well, thanks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a poll right now for the audience. And then we'll give it a minute and then we'll pick up a different pace of different line of question. In a minute. All right, let's stop that. And let's see, let me share these results on the screen here. Wow, almost three out of uh, five people, 60% uh, of the people are returning some kind of partial return in second quarter. So on that, Obviously, let's switch gears a little bit and uh, focus on the next, I'll go in a more um, rapid fire style here. So um, what does this post pandemic workplace look like? So um, I'll ask a question, it's, are they gonna be larger or smaller? Uh, let's talk with Carol. Um, as I mentioned before, I think it's gonna be all about choice and flexibility and um, I think it's kind of a mixed bag of they're gonna be larger or smaller. I think it's a, if there's going to be a distributed workforce that is, you know, in the office two days a week, then a company might need, you know, 
far less space or some companies are going to say, hey, we want to see everybody in here the majority of the time and sure you can work from home on Friday or something. And so then I think the, the amount of space is going to be, you know, relatively the same. But if a company decides to go 100% free address, then that really changes things. And that's where the data comes in and is important to understand who's going to be there and for how long they're going to be occupying the space. Um, but I think it also looks like um, places that people are going to want to be. People want to feel proud of their workplace when they come back to it and they want to feel like, um, you know, that their employer is really thinking about them in terms of safety and comfort and um, choices of things that they can do within the office that um, maybe that they didn't have before. Okay. Dave? Yeah, I, I, um, I do think that that choice is going to be huge. And, um, and in terms of how, how people come back to the office and, and in terms of the size, you know, it's interesting. We were, I was talking to one of our, one of our, our large clients and who is, you know, a global client, uh, based in East Bay, and you know, one of the things they they probably about two years ago went to more of a, a benching style from a more of a, a kind of a more of a hybrid cubicle kind of kind of environment, and they went to more of a benching style. And they've done a they've done quite a few surveys with their teams, and one of the things that they're they're hearing is that you know that privacy matters, that space matters, and so it's interesting for for them anyway. They're actually anticipating, you know, having needed a little bit more real estate, even though, even though they 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 certainly believe that that you know that there's that there's going to be, um, you know, there's going to be a, a broader program for from working from home or working from other places, and they will have some distrib distributed you know workforces workforce. But I still think they they feel like they're going to need a little more space. In addition, creating you know better more more better spaced collaborative spaces. So. I, I do think that that's going to, you know, I, I don't know whether it's going to be more or less space. I think that remains to be seen. I think, you know, in some cases, if, 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 and I think most companies, especially technology companies will go to more of a free address kind of a program. You know, what we're hearing is, you know, anywhere between 60 and 80% of, of tech companies are looking at a free address kind of a, kind of a program. So, so that potentially, you know, changes that dynamic a little bit, but I don't know that I haven't heard anybody say we're actually going to take less space necessarily. So I, I think it remain, it kind of remains to be seen, but but I think there's going to be there's there's going to be some changes in, in and I think a lot of it depends on how where we fall in terms of how this hybrid office really ends up landing and uh, you know whether there's more private spaces and things like that will, will make a big difference. What about you, George? Yeah, I was going to um, comment on what Dave just said um, about taking less space. Um, I think for us, it's it's more delaying um, the space that we're taking. Um, I, I think that in some areas we probably will, and it just depends on the comfort level of the teams that are located in those different markets. Um, I think that, um, you know, we will have some, some, what of a hybrid approach, uh, for this. We will have, um, people coming in leisurely. Um, we'll probably set up some hubs in different locations, different cities. Um, I, I, I don't see us, um, even towards the end of 2020, <clears throat> I don't even necessarily see us returning in full back to the office. I, I just, uh, with, with uh, what's happening uh, with the variants that are, that are coming up from uh, of the virus, um, the, the limitations of, of the vaccine itself, um, and, and also just personal hygiene habits. I don't necessarily see a resolution um, at the end of 2021. Sorry. So. You know, let me just add on to that just one more thing. You know, we, there's been a call years survey where they said that 77% 77, 77 of the, the companies they interviewed, the people they interviewed said that they were, they were as productive or more productive at home, you know, which, is, which I thought was interesting number. Yeah. And that 80% um, of them feel well managed uh, in, the, in, the, in the current environment which again, I thought that was an interesting statistic and that, you know, it's, it's their group that they interviewed and that 75% would want to work one day a week from home. But that if you get to two days a week, it, it that drops precipitously down to, you know, below 50%. So I thought those are some interesting statistics. And at the same time, a lot of our you know clients, larger clients who have big engineering staff, they're concerned about the productivity around their engineering teams. And I, I, that's, that's been something we've heard you know, a, a lot from our, from our clients. So, so it, there's a mixed bag there around, around some of that stuff. And then you have companies like Zoom and Salesforce who are really sales focused they, you know, their, their, their teams are a lot sales focused and, and they, you know, those, those people they want back in the office, they feel like there's, you know, collaboration that needs to happen amongst those teams. So. Awesome. 
No, a um, couple of things. Um, as some of the things you mentioned, so are we returning back to the world of cubicles? Will there be physical changes in the offices? Like for example, more ventilators and more HVAC filters, safety masks every, every desk, sanitizers every desk. Are you expecting seat ho- seats to have like a cup holders for a safety, uh, so, you know, sanitizing solutions? W- what are you expecting the physical changes and manifestations to be in workspaces? Um, I'll start. I think that um, definitely the cleaning protocols are going to be, you know, important. And every employee who's coming back to work is going to want to understand what's happening within their space. Um, Again, it's really dependent on how successful the vaccinations are and when people return, because there may not have to be things. Some of the things that you mentioned may not be needed um, if we're returning safely. But I think psychologically, people have been obviously affected by all of this, and um, there are going to have to be some visible um, changes and, you know, like more hand sanitizer out, stations out, and things like that, where people really feel like um, that they have the, you know, a safe place to be. Do you think we'll go back to the world of cubicles? Um, I don't think so. Um, I mean, I know that some of the companies that still have, you know, older cubicles in place have joked about, you know, the fact, well, yeah, we've already got these now, so we're, you know, we're much safer now, and why would we change the cubicle style? But I think that the cubicles um, were never conducive for collaboration, and I think that um, as workers, we've all gotten so used to being collaborative with the people in our offices, and I think the younger generation um, needs that collaboration a lot. And so I can't see, um, yeah, the younger generation, particularly, I can't see them sitting in, you know, five or six foot high cubicles, you know, isolating in there. I just don't see it happening. Yeah, I I agree with Carol on that point. I I don't see that happening either. I do think, though, that, you know, if you look at the life science industry, you know, they've they've been using more of a workstation kind of a design for a long, long time. And they're still doing that to this day. Right. It may not they're not using, you know, five foot high workstations, but they are, they're, they're definitely more, you know, more space, a little bit more privacy. And I, I, I do see that potential potentially happening with, with some companies, but I don't think we ever go back all the way to, to, to where we are. I think certainly the cleaning protocols will change. There's, there's companies that are, there's a life science company that's basically doing this UV, they have UV machines that clean the whole space at the end of the day. So that, you know, when people come back into the office the next day, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, virus free. So there's, there's that, that kind of stuff that's, that's going to be going on. And I think you will see a lot of that stuff. You'll see, you'll definitely see, uh, you know, and I think Carol mentioned this earlier, you know, much more data about how the office is being used. We're, we're, you know, we're going all in on occupancy sensors and making sure that, you know, how it's con- you know, scheduling for conference rooms and desk scheduling. And, and I think you're going to see too, that, you know, the way people come into the office, it, you know, you're going to have all this data to say, okay, I'm, I'm thinking about coming to the office tomorrow. Well, and, and I kind of wanted to meet with, you know, Bob and Carol and um, and Carol just came out, by the way, Carol. And um, and, you know, so are they going to be in the office tomorrow? And if they're in the office, maybe I'll schedule time to come in so that I can meet with them specifically. So I think we're gonna, you're going to start to see some of that some of that uh, data start to be used in that in that fashion. I'll Jordan? piggyback on onto that for just okay. one second. Um, and this is for our own experience in our office, when we are coming back and knowing that we are going to have to have employees who are going to, you know, they've gotten used to not commuting, they want to work from home a day or two a week, but we are going to mandate that there's at least one day a week that everyone is in the office. Because I think that um, you could, if you don't do that, you're going to go weeks and weeks without have, even seeing some of your coworkers in person. And so we definitely will be mandating um, at least one day, maybe two, where everybody has to be there. What about you, George? Yeah, so I, I, for sure, we're going to have uh, enhanced cleaning um, during the day and also I think in between shifts or, or, or uh, when the office is closed, depending on the type of office that we've got. Um, I, I, again, I, I think a lot of this is, there's a lot of unknowns. Um, and then there's also what is known, which is employee comfort um, when they return to the office. So I think a lot of what we're going to be doing is to make sure that the employees do feel safe when they come back um, and that we've done everything we can to make them feel safe. So um, we're working um, in our own spaces, in our own directly spaces. Um, we're enhancing our own building infrastructure 
uh, to include additional filtration um, and other, uh, a lot of like touchless items. So going to the restroom doors, things like that. Um, and then we're also working with our like landlord partners or co-working partners to make sure that they've got um, protocols in place um, and also these enhancements uh, that we would want um, so that our people feel safe. Um, and we think that most of them have been very receptive, um, but there's always the unknown. Um, things, new technology could pop up, uh, a new variant could pop up, uh, who knows what might happen, but, uh, but for the most part, we're, we're doing everything we can in terms of uh, enhancing our, the building infrastructure itself and also just our, our cleaning protocols. Um, and then I also see contract tracing as, uh, as a big element in this as well. Um, especially as this evolves or, or as it continues through the year, um, it, you know, should, should we go back immediately or uh, at a certain point where we, when we do return to office, um, we are going to have to have um, a certain amount of contract tracing so that in the event that somebody is exposed or, or, or has um, the, the virus uh, or ex ex exhibiting symptoms that we're able to, um, uh, as quickly as possible, uh, lock down uh, that space and and also inform the people that could have potentially been exposed to that. So that is very important. Yeah. Now um, I'm going to combine a couple of questions to different questions that we got from the audience. One is, are any of you seeing the need for more uh, outdoor workspaces? So like uh, kind of incorporating the outdoors where people can work and collaborate. And second is um, as these changes, obviously there are a lot of unknowns. Everybody can agree on that. Um, are there any strategies that you would recommend in managing or planning for the uncertainty of how much office space do I need? So I'll take, I'll take that one. Yeah. Um, in terms of the outdoor planning, we definitely are seeing clients who are putting more energy and um, thought into their outdoor areas be, because of exactly the reason why people are going to want to be able to sit outside and be in the you know, fresh air to have a meeting with someone or a collaborative session. And we're in the process of doing a um, repositioning for two buildings um, for a developer. And there's a large expanse of land between the two buildings. And so that's gonna be fully developed into, you know, courtyard, meeting spaces, amphitheater, you know, just all these different kinds of um, spaces that would be outdoor use for the employees to take advantage of. George? Yeah, so we've got we've got some amazing outdoor spaces in, in some of our offices already in in, uh, in uh, the Bay Area and also in Los Angeles. And um, we in these areas where we can actually use the spaces uh, year round, um, our employees do take advantage of it or had been taking advantage of it um, when when we were in the office. Um, I, I would anticipate that we are looking um, we would be looking for spaces with additional uh, outdoor areas. Um, and, and not only that, but one of the other things that I'm thinking about is um, in, in areas where we've got high rises, uh, do we want our uh, employees, do, we want my do I want my colleagues exposed, potentially exposed while they're riding in an elevator, uh, multiple floors? And, and I, I sometimes think that, you know, maybe we shift away from some of these larger buildings and get into something smaller, um, or at least buildings that potentially have isolated um, uh, or segregated entrances for, uh, for our own office space. Dave? Yeah, I, I see a huge trend toward, you know, toward outdoor office spaces. And I think that's, um, uh, I think you're, we're, we're seeing a lot more of that. Um, there's actually, you know, you're, we're seeing a lot more uh, from the manufacturers. We're seeing, we're seeing ideas and concepts around, you know, in, in a kind of outdoor, outdoor, indoor, indoor, outdoor kind of, kind of environments within, within an outdoor space. So covered, covered, kind of like what you're seeing in these restaurants, right? Where you're seeing these covered areas and, and that so people can go sit in there, they can meet in there and conference in there. So I think that that's, you know, people are going to see that as a premium going forward and they're going to figure out how to, how to incorporate more outdoor space. We, we, uh, we, we, we took a space in San Francisco uh, in Embarcadero too. It was an old Chevy space about a year ago. We barely, barely used it. Uh, we, we kind of finished it up and there's a, there's kind of a, a space that almost has an outdoor feel. It's, it's, it's covered, but you can open up the windows and, and that kind of stuff in it. It's, it's really great. We've set it up to have more of an outdoor feel to it. And there's lots of airflow. And so that's, you know, that's, that's, that's something that's kind of a blessing. We didn't think about it when we were doing it that way, but it's, it's become a great space for us as well. So I think you're going to see more, more of that kind of stuff. And I'll, I'll, George, I'll ask George, um, are you, what are your different strategies, various options? Are you hedging for more office space, less office space? What do you, 
what approaches are you any recommendations yeah um that's a good question um you know i i i commented earlier that we're we're in this hyper growth phase um and and it's difficult for us to to have a, a, a very long runway when it comes to the, the forward looking of where we're going um and that's why we we're working with these co-working uh, providers or our, our, our co-working partners to um, give us that flexibility so that we can grow um, and, and, and also partnering with them to make sure that, that the, the spaces are safe for us or for our employees to go to. Um, I, I don't, with this hybrid approach um, and, and the fact that our, our company as well, we've noticed uh, an increase uh, in productivity um, and also no change to productivity for, for this working home period. Um, and, and so I, I, I could see eventually maybe taking a little less space um, or potentially redesigning the space or reallocating some of that space to other cities um, so that we don't necessarily have to have everybody coming to the same location. Um, I think that one of the things that um, is, has become a trend now is making sure that you don't have too many people congregating uh, and what better way than to disperse everyone um, throughout different cities, and 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 I, and, and I also think that that would you know potentially increase our, our talent pool. Um, our diversity um, would would definitely benefit from that. Carol or Dave, do you have any thoughts to on hedging strategies or planning options? Carol. Um. Yeah, again, I think that um, some of our clients are in the wait and see mode. And so we haven't seen huge um, demands or requests for looking at how they can, you know, especially with um, taking more space. But I do agree when um, George said shorter leases, we have seen some of that in terms of um, tenants taking, you know, a one year or two year lease versus, you know, typically it would have been a five to seven. So I think that that's a trend that we're seeing. And I think it's because people are still uncertain about um, exactly when and what the future will hold. Yeah. And, and I, and I think that, you know, part of it is people like, like George is saying, you know, part of it is, is, you know, you're going to need the space, you know, the office isn't going to go away, but how exactly that office gets used and, and, you know, there's still, I think that we're still figuring some of that stuff out, right? What is, what does this office of the future look like? And we have a lot of ideas about it, but I think it's going to continue to evolve and, and, and germinate within, within the, within the, all, all of our companies. So, so to go out and commit to specific space today is hard to do until you understand a little bit better, you know, how the space is going to get used. And, and even some of these amenity spaces that, you know, you take for granted, these huge cap, cap, cafes and, and these huge, you know, food spaces that, that are, that are a lot of the technology companies are doing, is that going to stay the same or, or will those amenity spaces change? So I think part of it is just understanding how those spaces are going to get used. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to ask Carol this question, but, you know, we'll go turn each. This is a pretty open-ended question. So what do you think is, going to happen when this, whatever the post pandemic workplace will be, will we have like, we'll have to show that we've been vaccinated to get in. Uh, what happens to all those things that used to be the talent recruitment mm -hmm. things, right? For example, free beer, ping pong table, right. you know, those kinds of things or fitness gyms everywhere. Yep. Those mm -hmm. are the parts to bring people to the office and show off and those, what happens to those things and what does this new workplace look like? And more importantly, um, as you're talking to clients or you talk to clients, are they asking you to say, hey, we need to plan this post-COVID workplace and we need to keep employees safe? Are they, are they looking at new technologies? Will the screening part of it, like, do we have to go into office every day showing proof that we've been vaccinated and we've answered these questions? We don't right. do, is that the new normal? So let's start with you, Carol. Yeah. What do you well, think? Sure. Um, so right now we do screen um, temperature when people come into the office, although that sort of is a, a little bit of a false sense of security because you could have no temperature when you come in at eight in the morning and then you still could be sick by the time you leave at five o'clock. So but I think people just psychologically feel better that the temperature is being taken and recorded. Um, in terms of um, you talked about the gym and the, you know, all the free food and everything that's happening or has been happening in the past with um, a lot of the high tech clients, certainly unpackaged food is probably going to go away for some point in time. You know, 
a lot of our clients had like, you know, bowls of strawberries out on the counter. I mean, that's not going to happen anymore. It's going to be packaged so that people feel safe in taking um, food from a common area. But some of the other um, things that I think are shifting because of the pandemic is people are more interested in having um, benefits that include things that help them with childcare or um, mental health issues that they have access to therapy. Um, another company is uh, offering financial planning. And so I think that some of the typical perks like a workout facility and the food are shifting a little bit to benefits that really, you know, drive home and help the employee be able to do their job effectively and efficiently. And then also, um, since we are going to have people who are, some will be at home, some will be in the office, the whole um, AV and IT in infrastructure is going to have to be really seamless and done in such a way that, um, you know, that you can be in either place and still feel, um, not feel handicapped by that situation. So I think there's going to be changes in how that's all dealt with so that virtual meetings can happen, you know, even better than they're happening now. Dave? Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. I, I think that obviously, you know, the, the you know, kind of commenting or, or building on what Carol said about the amenities, I think, I think a lot of that is, is it, those are all going to change, I think. And I think that the typical amenities that, 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 that brought people to the office, you know, that are, that some of that may change. And, and for the, for just for the very reasons that it, it doesn't make sense. And at least for the time being to have, you know, open food and, and things like that, where you're going to have more box foods or, or, or even companies are going to say, Hey, let's support the local eateries. Let's, let's support the local businesses. That's going to be their style, especially if you're in an urban environment, right? They're going to say, let's, let's go out and support the local businesses. But I also think that, you know, again, I, it's interesting that, you know, I, there's I, Harry Dent wrote, wrote a book called the roaring two thousands. And one thing he said is that, you know, no great change happens without, you know, a major event, right? And this is clearly a major event that that's happening. And, 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 and what's interesting is not just this event, but all these other events that have happened over the last, you know, 10 or 11 months and what's, you know, what's happened in, in, in our world and our, you know, in our society. And so I think, you know, some of these, some of these kind of this major event change is I think is changing the way people look at work. And I, I think what's, what's, you know, we start to think about this equality, the experience around all your employees and, you know, there's, yeah, the, 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 how, do, how, do, how do companies start to look at that? How do they lo start to look at, you know, diversity and inclusion? How do they start to look at sustainability? How do they start to look at, you know, you know leadership empathy, you know, and, and really starting to think about the employee experience differently than I think we have. And I think that, you know, when, in, when you know, the last 10 years, especially in Silicon Valley, things have just been roaring along and you, 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 you get, you, you pack people into space and you, you give them some food and you, and you know, you, you make sure they stay at the office for 12 hours a day and that's kind of how you do it. And I think, I think even work-life balance is, is changing in, in a lot of these dynamics and how people view their relationship to the office is changing. So I think it's incumbent upon, upon us, all of us to figure out, you know, how do we create that experience that's, you know, there's there's a great office experience, but there's also, you know, that it, 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 it needs to morph a little bit more. And, and and obviously how we use technology and all that stuff will we'll play big into that into that that experience for our, for our employees. George, um, I want you to answer the question, but I also want to add a little caveat to it because you're in a different role. Um, as you're bringing people back to the office, as you're thinking about bringing people back to the office, are you requiring that they be vaccinated or is that part of your plan? So if so, like, are you gonna are you gonna start keeping track of those things? Are you tracking like what the government? I mean, are you gonna mandate that, or um, are you expecting the government or state government to mandate that? Yeah. Um, I, well, I can tell you, as as of right now, we're considering everything, um, but uh, we haven't implemented anything yet, um, uh, other than our continued uh, work from home policy, um, and and then we are. Uh, we've, we've got an entire team that's dedicated to, to looking at new technologies related to COVID, um, uh, how we're going to bring people back safely. Um, obviously, um, multiple different um, specialties are involved in that. Um, but we, we are, are considering just about anything. Um, so, so that's the answer to your, the, the second part of your question. In, in, in terms of the, the first part, um, you know, I, I think that all of these perks and, and, and different amenities are... are are offered because we want to get talent. We want to keep talent. Um, we want to make sure that nobody leaves us and goes elsewhere. Um, and, and we want to innovate by bringing new people on. 
Um, so I think that there's going to be a lot of healthy competition amongst the peers um, to, to make sure that, that we've got um, the best offering um, that we can uh, so that we can, you know, uh, take from each other. So um, I, I don't know any, with regards to any specifics of any kind of benefits and perks and things like that, I, I, I can't answer, um, at least it's, it's beyond my scope, so. Yeah, no worries. I wanted to add something about the vaccine. Um, one of our local school districts, um, if a teacher chooses not to get vaccinated and they get COVID, they cannot use their sick time for that COVID time that they have to take off. So I do think um, that companies are gonna be, you know, looking at different ways or policies that they can develop based on the vaccination process. Because, you know, even though you have the vaccination, it's only 95% effective. So um, if you have people who aren't vaccinated, they still can pass, you know, COVID on to someone who had a vaccine. So are you gonna let people not vaccinated in your workplace? And then how do you control visitors and guests and all that kind of thing? So a lot to think about. No, um, that's, that's a very good point. Now, in terms of, um, you know, we are kind of reaching the end of the hour. So I just want to be very quick about this. So let me ask the panelists the same poll that we asked the audience earlier. When do you think we'll be getting back to work? Sometime this year, sometime in Q4, sometime next year? What do you think? Let's start with Carol. Um, I think probably Q3, Q3 to four. Mm -hmm. okay. George? I, I think the same Q3 to four, maybe maybe Q3. I'm leaning more towards Q3 um, because I, I know that there's a lot of anticipation uh, amongst my my peers and and in my employee groups um, to, to come back to the office. And I know that people are going to take additional precautions to make sure that we're able to come back safely. So, Dave, yeah, same. I, I I'm thinking Q3 is where is where we'll likely land. Um, are we going to get, uh, is screening going to be part of the normal part of the job going forward forever? Uh, let's start with Dave. I don't know. I, I, you know, I certainly for, it will be probably till through the end of the year. And then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll know more as, as that time comes, but you know, we do, I think we will require people to be vaccinated before they come back to the office. That that's, you know, that's pretty okay. much for sure. George. Yeah, I think screening initially, uh, multiple different types of screening. I think we're gonna, everybody's just going to throw everything into the pot uh, at the beginning, and then eventually things will start getting peeled away. So, yeah. Okay. Carol? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, at least through the end of the year and probably into the following year at some point in time. Um, yeah, it's going to continue. People are going to want it to feel safe. Um, at this time, I'm going to launch the second poll. Uh, just we'll give it 30 seconds and we'll come back to parting thoughts from the audience. All right, let me wrap it up. And as I display the results, um, let's start with George. What are your thoughts? Um, any parting thoughts on this topic? Any, any nuggets of wisdom you want to leave with the audience? <laughs> um... No, I, I think that uh, technology is evolving. Our, our, our knowledge and understanding of, of the virus um, is evolving. Um, I, I think our, our response um, to, to this and um, will, will potentially dictate how we uh, respond to future events such as this. Um, I, I do think that it is a game changer. It's not just something that's temporary. Um, and, and I definitely do think that we are going to have to, to look at a future where um, we have, whether it's a virus or some other um, type of uh, calamity that, um, that, that is pervasive, I, I think that that's going to be part of our future. Okay. Carol? Sorry to be depressing. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll make it a little bit more pragmatic. uplifting. <laughs> no, I think that people are going to have to really work together, whether it be, um, you know, in our field of, you know, what we're doing, helping our clients. But I just think there's going to be a lot of people coming together to work towards the best solutions for the good of everyone. And uh, Dave. Yeah, I think that, um, I, I think that, you know, I think there will definitely be a kind of an increased awareness on, on, you know, just the, 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 the quality of the workspace. And I think there will be, there'll be more attention paid toward, Toward you know how we work and and the the certainly the the client ex, uh, not the client but the employee experience, um, I think that'll be that'll be a huge area of focus. I, I actually think this is a 
you know, for all of it, for all of the, the, the pain and, and kind of challenge has been for all of us, I do think there's opportunity here to, to really pay more attention to, you know, to how we, how we design our workspaces and how we, how we, um, and, and how we become more adaptable because, you know, you never know, it could be, it could be 20 years or hundred years before the next you know, pandemic, or it could be three years. And so how we design and how we think about that and how we think about the adaptability of our workspaces and, 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 you know, all, everything we do, I think is going to be really important. Okay. Well, thank you all the panelists. Thank you to all the attendees. I know we've kind of gone over a couple of minutes, but I think this is a really good discussion. There is not really a good end point to it because there are a lot of good questions that we didn't, we didn't get to, but I'll circulate to the panelists and see if they have any comments or questions on that after the webinar. Again, thank you, Dave. Thank you, George. Thank you, Carol. We appreciate thank you. your time. And thanks for coming and uh, sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you. Thanks okay. very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Bye.